Hello and welcome back to our HIP New World Order campaign. In our last episode, we declared a war for the last piece of land we need down here to complete the Dijur Kingdom of Miser, which is good. We are at 71% and we're about to win that. And we also finally granted independence to Hungary under our aunt, Queen Adelaide the Wise. So hopefully she is going to do a pretty good job as the queen there. She has a pretty good air lined up already, so things look to be nicely under control in that area. Obviously, we'll be her ally basically forever, so if she needs help, she can call us in. And we'll be glad to help. But for now, we are getting ticking war score from our target being sieged, and otherwise we are just going to siege his capital and another county here until we can get 100%. Might have to divert to deal with this army if they have enough troops to start sieging this back. But we'll see. I could not help but overhearing the stable master and a courtier's animated discussion, something about a horse and a payment due today. But the courtier insisted to pay the stable master later that week. Let's interfere. I settled a master or I settled a matter between Lucia and the stable master. But Lucia does not like me. Oh no, Lucia likes me better. The opposite of that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so if this 1900 is also coming around here, I'm sure that they do have enough troops to siege it back, so maybe we'll just... Yeah, we'll let them get there and then we'll use our 9000 to chase them out. Have a new Duke of Dumiat. Not a big fan, but that's okay. Soon he is going to be somebody else's problem. And we have a new Duke, who is a big fan is good news because he is going to be our problem forever, basically. Or at least for the duration of his life. More buildings completing, that's good, and... They apparently disbanded some troops there and raised some more over here. They do still have enough to siege though, so we will divert this army. Between the ticking war score and the war score we'll get from his capital holding, I don't think we're going to need to siege this county too, so shouldn't be lengthening the war by doing this. My little half brother, Prince Folkmar, always has his nose in the scriptures and spends all his time among the priests. So we can have him lose the trait cynical. Which he doesn't have, I think. Um, he'll gain one learning and become zealous. I guess that's okay. I'll allow it. You discovered a plot where Giselle seeks to kill Prince Folkmar. No, don't do that. Who even are you? I'll just tell her to stop. Currently in this person's court. Up here. No idea why she would take a dislike to Folkmar. I'll forgive you this time. But next time, into the dungeons with you. Yeah, you've taken some technology from Barcelona, that's good. This Duke has declared a county war over Quena. That is down here. Oh, okay, so there was one other holding in here that that guy had. I thought I took all of those before, but I guess I didn't. That's fine. Our Duke can take care of it for us. A famous herald, well-versed in the diplomatic protocol, has arrived at our court. He is proposing his services to us, and our Chamberlain is saying that we can make good use of this man. So we can spend 64 gold for a diplomat named Matthias, or lose 5 prestige. We have plenty of gold. 
We'll take them. We will also take these prisoners. Unfortunately, we did not manage to capture the Nagus. In our siege there, but that's okay. We're up to 91%, so we should win this fairly soon. Your mission has been a success, okay. I don't think we have a problem with the Duke of Savoy, or any other Dukes for that matter, but that's okay. May as well just leave him where he is. So we are up to 93%. Mokmar is mastering the art of diplomacy. He's up to a trained diplomat, which is pretty good. Turning into quite a good character. We do, of course, want to get him an education trait from somebody other than us, though. We'd like him to be better than Fortune Builder. So we'll have to remember to give him to a different character, probably within the next year or so. Okay, our Duke has taken that barony, good for him. Ooh, and he's got 4,000 troops together, not enough to actually do anything. We should probably keep an eye on him nonetheless. And we're off to hunt the Great White Stag again, so let's go for it. Seems like he's just uh, hanging around over there anyway. But we won our siege and got to 100, so we'll enforce demands. So I think we'll just go ahead and grant the recently acquired land to random characters. I guess it's just one county. I suppose our Duke of here is going to want control of this county, so we may as well transfer it to him. And I think that means that we have the entire kingdom under our control. Yes, we do, so we can just go ahead and grant it to this duke of our dynasty. Unfortunately, it is under Gavilkind's succession, so he'll have to deal with that himself. Hopefully he can switch it to some other better succession law if he stays in charge for 10 years, which he should do. So we'll grant him that, and I think we'll just go ahead and grant him independence right now. Let's make sure that he has the whole kingdom and nothing else. Doesn't own any land up here or anything. Oops, uh, okay, that's fine. So there we go, we have an independent Kingdom of Miser ruled by our dynasty member. Which is great. Um, unfortunately, we do have troops raised down here, which is something I probably should have uh, dealt with before we granted that kingdom ind independence. I guess we'll just raise some boats and pick them up. And we have a call to arms from the Queen of Hungary against the Bulgarian Empire. Okay, so I guess they are uh, taking those two counties that uh, we failed to take in that previous war, thanks to my accidentally giving away the kingdom title, not realizing that would invalidate the war. We'll accept. Oh, uh, speaking of 
things, we actually have two holdings in here that are directly under us, rather than under the Kingdom of Hungary, as they should be. Well, we can just grant this guy independence, and Hungary can conquer him as she pleases. Hopefully we can do the same with this guy. Yep, he's directly under us as well. Okay. So it looks like Hungary has about 40,000, uh, more like 46,000 troops in the area already. Which is probably more than the Bulgarian Empire has in total. Okay, so they're not going to really need our help. That's fine though, we'll be able to watch as they win. Is this over the entire duchy, I wonder, or just a county? Old duchy, good. So they're going to get their whole du jour kingdom. This is very nice for them. We are off to hunt the Great White Stag, though. Let's raise these boats and get them down here to bring our troops home. You spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but are forced to return empty-handed. You are sure that no one's impressed by your failed adventures, so we can lose 20 prestige and become hum humble if we admit to failure. I guess that's fine. And let's see, how old is Folkmar now? He's still over a year from coming of age, so we can hold on to him for the moment. I guess we could choose a new focus if we want to. Yeah, I guess we'll take the rulership focus, because I think this gives us a chance of upgrading our own education trade, and maybe we'll be able to do that within the next year and not have to give him to somebody else. Which would be nice. Okay, Cyprus changing crown laws. Also, Jerusalem and the Bulgarian Empire. Good to know, I suppose. So my son Valram asked me for a fief of his own to govern. We can mention a church career. Which I think we will do. We could grant him some land eventually. I guess it was maybe a little bit uh, mean of us to take away the entire empire from him that he was previously in line to inherit. Maybe we'll get him married to a genius so that maybe we can get some better characters of our dynasty around. And speaking of getting people married, we should probably try to line up a betrothal for Folkmar. Let's see, so he is quick and tall. I think the ideal pairing for him then would be a strong character, if we can find one. Yeah, let's sort by age and look for somebody around his age. There is a strong 13-year-old available with um, mostly very good traits. Unfortunately, she's chaste, as is Folkmar. So I think we would prefer to choose somebody who is not chaste, if at all possible. Uh, there's a strong 14-year-old, but she's also absent-minded, which I guess is not terrible. And I'm not sure if this is actually a hereditary trait. I think it is, based on the fact that it is uh, the same icon shape as the strong genius, etc. traits. Uh, there's another strong 14-year-old. Unfortunately, she also has a fertil fertility penalty. Uh, 
this one is much better, okay. And she's even lustful, okay, good. We'll get that lined up. And we collected a tithe, which is great. So Hungary is up to 90% in her war with the Bulgarian Empire. I caught Folkmar lying to me again straight to my face without batting an eye. I almost had an innocent servant sent to the stocks, so we can have him become deceitful. Which would be okay, I guess. Basically trading some diplomacy for some intrigue. Or we could have him maybe become honest instead. We'll try to make him become honest. I think it's probably better for him to have higher diplomacy. To the brave giant Lutgard. Um, oh, I guess we're tall. That makes sense. Uh, peace be with you. I have decided to accept your suggestion of a betrothal. Okay. Thank you. And we have a new vassal queen of Byron. Alright, she is not especially happy with me. Maybe we'll send her a gift. 100 gold is relatively good. So unfortunately, she is of our dynasty, but her, her heir is not, since she's non-matrilineally married. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're just going to lose the plus 5 opinion bonus with her successor. Though he has such a cool uh, crest for his dynasty that I really can't be mad about it. One plus five opinion bonus is not that much anyway. Uh, we're apparently only going to get 5,000 of 9,000. Um, I guess that's okay. We'll deal with it. May as well get our whole retinue together. My prisoner is complaining about her dark cell. We'll let her rot. So uh, we no longer control any of the land in Africa or the Middle East personally, which is uh, fine by me. Of course, we still have a lot of it ruled by dynasty members. Apparently we're showing up green on the map now instead of the um, whatever color it was before. That's fine, I guess, though I don't know why. My prisoner is complaining about her dark cell in the dungeon. We'll, of course, let her rush. That's fine. Miser, it seems, is having a revolt already. War against his tyranny. I'm not sure if this actually will result in him being deposed. That would be annoying. He is winning. Okay, we'll hope he manages to continue winning. Hungary is in the war with him, so... With any luck, she'll get her war finished very quickly, which it seems is going to be the case, and then she'll go and help him out. But originally I was planning to basically end this series once we had finished with the Kingdom of Miser and the whole Hungary situation, which we have done at this point. But um, the newest version of HIP is apparently not... It's not out uh, at the time of recording here, and probably won't be out by the time this episode goes up and maybe not for another week or so after. So I think I'm going to continue on this series for probably about another week or so. We'll find something to do in the meantime. Uh, yeah, Bulgaria is going to lose that battle. And we'll probably uh, find a convenient place to end it once the new HIP version comes out and get a new series started with that. Another day at court and another endless procession of matters that are required you are required to pass judgment on. As yet another peasant drones on about his sickly pigs and the neighbor he believes poisoned them, you feel a profound emptiness. This isn't the life you'd imagine, so we're going to become depressed. Which is unfortunate. That is minus one to many of our stats and minus one to health. Which is not so bad because we're also strong, which gives us plus two I think Toll gives us a small bonus as well. So we shouldn't be in immediate danger of death because of that. We'd like to get rid of it though, if possible. 
So that battle got Hungary up to 98%. My prisoner is complaining, we'll let him rot of course. And let's actually click the Ransom All Prisoners button. So this battle should finish Hungary's war. Alright, it's over. They gained the two counties in here to give them perfect du jour borders, which is nice to see. Alright, and on that note, uh, we are just about out of time for this episode, so we'll leave it here for now. Thanks for watching, and join me again next time.